My name's James Martin and welcome to the Columbus Washboard Company. You're here in the factory. This factory originally started in 1895 in Columbus, Ohio, and it got moved in 1999. It got moved here to the current premises, which is a former shoe factory in downtown Logan. We manufacture washboards genuinely for use or for decoration or for anything you want, but they are 100% him made here in the USA, and we're very proud of that. So the part of the factory that you're in right now is uh, the former production area for the Godman Shoe Company, which uh, originally built this factory. And we had it converted so that we could do washboard operation in 1999. We currently make around 20,000 washboards a year. And as I said before, they are for genuine use. Uh, they're not just purely for decoration, but of course, some people can use them for decoration. In this particular part of the building, the assembly starts from the actual wood assembly right through to producing the actual grooves in the metal through to full final assembly, which is over in the corner over there. The first part of washboard assembly is to get the frame together. So this is uh, the head of a pale size washboard and our first part of this, because the wood actually comes to us in this shape, it's already shaped and formed by a company in Laurelville and we use Ohio Poplar. The fir very first part of it is that we have to put the finger joints in. And to do that, we use this machine here. It's very simple, it starts off like this. It goes into here and it bites into the wood, you swap it around, you do exactly the same, and then it comes out like this. And this is an original 1900s machine. We believe that it was originally driven by a belt, and at some point it was, driven, it was converted to motor. Now this is, you can see, is just a single piece process every time. So to make things more efficient, we actually have these machines here where we can do the same process, but with two dozen of the heads at the same time. And that actually is also replicated along here because this is the, uh, the pale size. And here is uh, here we have the large size legs. And again, they need finger jointed as well. We don't use glue and stuff like that. It is literally assembled as it was back in the day. So again, you just pop it into that machine, stick it through, and it comes out as a finger jointed piece of wood. And again, because that's a single piece, we actually have these machines here that again, make it way more efficient. Now the final part of the actual wood frame part is where we come over and we do the routing um, and that will actually put two holes uh, into the, uh, the legs of the wood. And then once that's done, then we can uh, go into full assembly. So at that point, this is all finished here and then we can actually go into the main room and we can actually start assembling a washboard. So here's a finished, uh, fully assembled washboard. This is a double handy. We've actually been making these since the 1930s and we actually have some that were made around World War II time when they actually just used a single colored uh, die so that uh, they could save on ink. The way that this is assembled is through here. We actually have uh, this machine, which has not changed. And um, basically you assemble all of the pieces of wood together. Uh, you put the metal in, and then once you've got it all together, it's like a crimping system. You basically put your foot on here. And if you can see that going in, it just puts everything together. And then once you've done that, we actually have nail guns. And here they go, and they get nailed in six places. So very, very simple. You'll notice that I'm not doing it, and that's because we have people that actually know what they're doing. I'm here just to demonstrate. We did, for the nails, interestingly, we used to use a machine here. Um, this actually is a gravity-fed nailer, um, but because uh, the machinery is so old and uh, we uh, were having problems with it quite frequently, uh, we decided to discontinue using this machine, but because it's very, very neat, um, we still have it for display. And as I said, we use the nail guns now because if anything goes wrong with a nail gun, you can literally just pull that off the line, uh, you can replace it with a spare, and then you can send the other one off for repair. It doesn't stop production at all. So moving along, as you can see, we have 
quite a few of these uh, set up so we can uh, uh, produce as many or as little washboards as we actually need to. This machine here is our original printing press. Isn't that neat? Um, and as you can see, here's a made right that was actually printed on that machine. And uh, again, here's the double handy again. And let me show you the difference because this is a double handy that was printed on this machine. It uses, um, as I say, these plates here, but these plates are impossible to replace now. So that is how it would look if you actually printed it on there uh, now. And this is what we actually uh, do ourselves. We actually do screen printing um, and um, we actually can change, instead of it saying Columbus Washable Company of Columbus, Ohio, we're now the Columbus Washable Company of Logan, Ohio. So it gives us a bit of flexibility that we can uh, change it around. But as you can see, we've kept the design true to the original. This is actually a, uh, a better print. And the reason being is that um, if you actually use this as a washboard, eventually this will fade, whereas this one does not so much yet because it's using uh, a different type of ink. And you can see here, there's lots and lots of logos that we've had uh, over the years, and most of them we are still using. For example, we have the Bear on Easy. This actually refers to our 1907 patent for our rubbing plates. And we also have uh, the Sunnyland. That's another one that is another one of ours that we use very much. And we also have the, here's another one, here's another Bear on Easy, again, referring to the 1907s. And these are original designs, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that wonderful? You just can't invent this sort of history. And as I mentioned before, there is uh, some that they were doing during World War II. That's around 1941. And you can see that's a V for victory model that they were producing at the time. So of course, when we need the rubbing surfaces for our washboards, we can't just call a supplier and say, can we have some washboard metal, please? Uh, what we can do is we can actually get the metal in the right gauge and the right width. And here's an example of the metal that comes through to us. We have different types. This is galvanized metal, and you can see because it's got um, more of a sort of a grayer finish. And we also have stainless steel. And stainless steel has an advantage in the fact that if stainless steel does rust, uh, it's no problem, just get a Brillo, rub it off, and you're good to continue. But for, for the authentic look, galvanized is the washboard that we recommend because it does tend to get darker over time. And what we do is we put these great big several thousand pound rolls uh, onto uh, this big roller here. It then comes through this part here, and there are uh, two crimps uh, that um, are original crimps with the, uh, the actual designs that we want on it. And then it comes through and uh, eventually it will go through to the end there and we cut them to the correct size. So we can spend an entire day uh, doing that and then we just keep them all spare, ready to go. We all, not only do we have a couple of different metal types, we also have some different rubbing surfaces. We have the regular wavy, uh, which is the same on either side. And then we have a spiral. And just purely by the way that it's crimped, it's actually rougher on one side. So that's for your jeans, it's for your socks, it's for things that need some serious attention. On the other side, it's smoother. So that's more for your delicates. Have you ever wondered how those great big staples get into these big boxes? Well, if you have, you're just about to get your answer. Here is a 1926 silver stitcher, which is actually manufactured or was manufactured by the Acme Corporation. Um, I thought that was a name that was made up, but clearly it isn't. And the way that this machine works is that uh, it literally stitches the staples into the box. And I'm gonna give you a demonstration now. So. Very, very easy. All you do is you just switch it on. You go ahead and you get your box. And this will take a few washboards. So you get it to how you want it. And then you go over to this part of the machine. You make sure you've got it in position. And when you're ready, there's a little lever at the bottom, which you push down. And at some point, just like a clutch, it's going to start working. So here we go. And there you go, folks. Isn't that simple? 
And the great thing about this machine is that it literally just runs on um, a length of wire, which we can buy at the hardware store. We don't need to buy any special staples, so it's not like uh, your ink uh, that you need for your printer at home, uh, where you have to buy special cartridges or anything. We literally just run a length of wire. So that actually helps us uh, with our operating costs and the fact that this machine still works. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. I love it. Now, can you hear that this machine is even on? <laughs> it's, it's such a silent machine. It's really good. Very proud of it. And here we have some finished washboards that have been assembled over the last couple of days. This is the Made Right. Um, this is the full-size washboard, and this can be used for a family, or you can use it for decorating, or whatever you want it to be, really. You can even use it to play. Now, obviously I didn't have any timing there whatsoever, but musicians do use these washboards. And again, because of the fact that this is crimped on uh, its uh, different surface, you can actually get a slightly different si sound on either side. And there are lots and lots of musicians that use them. And actual fact, I believe that the Quarrymen, um, which was the precursor to the Beatles, were actually a band that used these. So. Um, that's something with a nice bit of heritage for us and uh, yes you can see these are all ready to go and they'll be shipped out to hardware stores all around the country and you can actually buy them yourself online um, or you can actually get them from downtown Logan so if you ever want one of these you know where to get them. We also manufacture some kids washboards as well and this was one of our newest products. This actually came out around 2000, I believe. This is perfect for children. It's also great for gifts. And we can actually put on your own logo if you want. You can put down, if it's uh, some sort of uh, reunion or anything like that, we can print those up for you. In actual fact, we can do that on all of the washboards, but they're particularly popular with these. And of course, they're great gifts as well. If you've come to Logan, Ohio, uh, it's wonderful to say that you actually bought a mini washboard that actually came uh, from the town that you were visiting. And over here, we actually have, this is our rogues gallery. So what you're seeing here is all of the washboards that uh, we currently manufacture. And it's actually a storage place as well. So if any folks want uh, a washboard, we can literally just pull them out of uh, any of these shelves here. But you can see the, the logos in their, their glory. Uh, we haven't actually talked much about the Crystal Cascade. We have a pale size washboard that is still manufactured in glass. It is the only rubbing surfaces on the front side. It is smooth on the back. And this came out, I believe, uh, around about the time of World War II. And the reason being is that uh, they had some problems with sourcing metal. And so what they did was they started making them in glass. And we then found out that they are ideal for places like the Caribbean and uh, for people living on boats and um, any sort of particularly uh, damp, salty environment. So these are very, very good for that. They're only available in the pale size, uh, but uh, they are very, very popular. And then, of course, we do have some variants. We do uh, chalk boards here and cork boards, which obviously are uh, just for decoration. We started manufacturing those, I believe, around 20 or 30 years ago. And again, they are very popular and we do the green and we do the black. And here you can see very, uh, very clearly the difference between the metal types. So you can see this is the wavy crimp and this is wavy crimp too, but you can see this is stainless steel, and can you see how much brighter that is compared to this, which is the galvanized. I actually have a galvanized one at home, which I do put up admittedly on my wall as a decoration, but whenever I get a stain on any of my shirts, that gets taken down, I use a little, little bit of soap, I just wet the garment, I rub it up and down a few times on the washboard so that I can start lifting the stain and then it goes in the washer just like everybody else's. But it's a great stain removal tool and we do sell an awful lot for that. And these are the full size boards so you can actually see a very good comparison of the pale size. Pale is called pale because it's designed to go into a bucket and then you have the family size boards which are obviously for with a bigger rubber surface so you can actually get more stuff done. But you can actually use them quite comfortably uh, for uh, any purpose. Mm -hmm.